Hey everybody, Edo here, and I am excited because I have Keith Mateka from Thunderworks Games here on site, in studio, <laughs> at location. Say hello. Hey everybody, how's it going? <laughs> and so, <clears throat> previously, I interviewed you and did a QA. and I, I want to say it was about a year ago, maybe not, mm -hmm. maybe it was a little bit more, um, right. and we sort of went over how you started, the yeah, games, yeah. things you were doing, and at that time, role player was moving and growing. Yeah, I mean, we were talking specifically about like um, how to set up a Kickstarter campaign for a base game plus a reprint, and um, talking about like <clears throat> the you know where, where do all these things go and kind of. And if I'm not mistaken, things. because of that video, <laughs> your campaign grossed it, it almost three hundred and fifty thousand <laughs> dollars. It's uh, <laughs> but no, no. But one of the things that happened after that, mm -hmm. uh, role player has been a fantastic success. I've been at conventions with Keith, and I've seen it going out and selling like hotcakes. <laughs> um, but you were working full time uh, as a producer in video games, right? Right. Yeah. So I had uh, I had a day job that uh, with, with lots of responsibilities and obligations, and then uh, my board game stuff. Uh, was on the side. Like a lot of people, their board game as a designer or even as a small publisher, that's kind of something you do on the side in addition to what else, whatever else you have going yeah, on. Yeah, nights and weekends and right. mornings. and Right. It's it's, it's uh, a, a, a hobby that turns into a jobby at some point in terms of like, you know. <laughs> that's good. Like, I, like, I like a jobby. <laughs> yeah. Like, like uh, you know, there's you, you do it because you love it and uh, you want to see if you can do this thing. There isn't, isn't necessarily like a ton of money uh, that's coming in from it, but it's something that you enjoy and you're doing. Um, and then at some point, you know, you have a certain level of success and then you start thinking, well... Thunderworks game level of success. <laughs> right, think, well, that's what happened. And right. so I remember, um, and, and so let's talk about the moment a little bit, but this is actually back in April. So it's, you've had some time beyond it, but um, you were right. thinking about... Right. Making this shift, right, right. Take us through what you were thinking. You went around and you pulled like everybody in the industry. <laughs> I, I, I mean, a lot of people, some who should be considering it and some who shouldn't, are thinking about should this, should I move on and should I focus on games full time? Take us through like that process. For yeah, you. I mean, it was probably a, a nine month kind of mental uh, process to kind of work through all of it and figure out how I wanted to do it, but. Um, you know, role player had a certain level of success, and the expansion did really well. I mean, I think with uh, additional <laughs> with additional sales on like uh, pledge managers, it did well over four hundred thousand dollars. And um, you know, I I not in my wildest dreams would thought I would have a campaign or a game that, that was that was that successful. So <clears throat> I was like, okay, these are like significant numbers that like uh, maybe I should be pouring my efforts during the day into these projects instead of uh, doing whatever I was doing. Um, and my, my job at my video game company that I, I, I love working with that team and I thought that I really liked that job as well, but so it's kind of a, a tough choice, but some of it turned into some of the big hurdles and making the decision is like, um, health insurance became a big topic for me because uh, my wife doesn't have an employer that provides it. So it's like, okay, if I'm going to decide to go full time, that means I have to have some other solution for health insurance, um, which at least in the U S can be pretty significant. Um, and also like financially, am I, am I a good sp spot to do this? So I spent a lot of time talking to my accountant, like, you know, and if you, if you have, you know, if you only have one small game, maybe an accountant's not something you have, but definitely when I started to have two or three games and like taxes started to get more complicated, I was definitely pulling in my accountant to kind of help me, uh, see through the numbers to some degree and worry about that because that's always been... You can get lost in that stuff, and I really wanted to focus on making games and, and the production and art direction and all that element of it. So I have my accountant that helps me out with that. And um, I just asked a lot of people questions. I saw other guys that were considering a similar move. I know like AJ and Evan over at uh, Van Ryder Games uh, had made that switch, were thinking about that switch, and had done that, like had decided to go full time like right before I did. And we were kind of, you know, comparing notes and figuring out, like, hey, what are you nervous about? What am I nervous about? Like, and what kind of solution do you have for this problem? So that was going on, and I, I talked to like Patrick Letter over at Letter Games, and he'd gone full time recently, or like at the time recently, and kind of talked to him through his process mm -hmm. of mentally, like how do you prepare for this move? Because um, you know, you're basically saying, all right, let's go, and there's no net, and you know, what's the backup plan? Maybe you have one, maybe you don't have a great one. 
So, um, and actually, you haven't seen it, but uh, a few weeks before this post, I interviewed Patrick again yeah. for the first time. But we talked about that moment, right? And so, for the people who were like, "You're crazy! Don't do it! It's totally a mistake! You're going to regret it." What was their main point? I, I guess, like, there weren't that many people. Like everyone's just like it's like what are you doing? Just do it. I mean, uh, Ed was one of those people. Like, what are you waiting for? Um, And I just like mentally had to be like uh, comfortable with it, right? So, um, one one of the big things that I was nervous about was this whole medical insurance piece. Um, It's like I was trying to figure out how much that was going to cost me, and you know, it's going to be end up being you know about fifteen hundred bucks a month just to pay my medical insurance and. And I was carrying a mortgage that was about this, a similar uh, size. So I pushed really hard over those nine months to be able to pay off my house so that I could uh, switch, basically swap my mortgage payment with my medical insurance payment and kind of live under a similar budget. Um, so that was kind of one of the bigger pieces for me. And well, so remembering all the conversations from back then, there, there were some people telling you. And I think <laughs> I'm sure that, let me just paraphrase the argument because I think it's reasonable is um, – your hit today isn't your hit tomorrow. Right. And in the game industry, it's a hit-driven business. It's fickle. And just because you're selling now doesn't mean you're going to be selling in one month, two months, three months down the line. It right. doesn't mean your next game is going to be a hit. Right. And you could easily find yourself in a position where you're like, oh, I budgeted whatever, bringing in five grand, ten grand a month, whatever it is. Right. Uh, and now it's two. And what happened? And suddenly... There's no consistency. Whereas you're working a job, you're getting right. a paycheck that you know the success of whatever they're doing. So that sure. I think most people who were in the hesitation category talked about in the context of even though the food tastes good today, <laughs> doesn't right. mean it will always taste good. Right. So it's like um, for role player, it's like I've some of it was waiting to see like is this going to be an evergreen title for me? Right. Something that I can continue to sell for a handful of years? Or is this something that people are going to not care about in three months? And then um, I'll either be sitting with a bunch of inventory that I can't get rid of, or um, I'll be trying to find that next hit. So, you know, my plan is to continue to support the things that people like of that have proven successful, and then, then try to develop additional kind of hit products on the side so that uh, when this thing starts to die out, maybe the next thing uh, is becoming uh, popular as well. So, um, I don't know. There's also a kind of diversification. You know, it's like um, I, I also try to find relationships with like with Ed or <laughs> or other guys to kind of um, you know just uh, do different stuff, do different stuff, and 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 not kind of be always in my silo. And, and you, you might not know this, but <laughs> Keith is still paid. Uh, small amounts of money to edit other people's <laughs> I do, rule books. I, I do do some rule book editing. <laughs> so, some publishers, some, some some publishers outside of the U.S. Yeah, and and that's actually an example for what it's worth of. And and one of the cool things about Thunderworks Games, and I would say the, the same thing about Doctor Finn's games, is these are, are are folks that I compare notes with regularly and talk about not only our business but like how we're thinking about it and growing it. Um, but like one of the things I'll say to Keith is like, why are you doing that? Like, <laughs> why, why are you spending, there's no way that you, you know, you just left this job not to have this other responsibility, but why are you taking incremental revenue for something that isn't growing your brand? Right. right, right. Um, that, and <laughs> that isn't to say I can't describe something else we might talk about, but, right. but, but <laughs> editing a rule book, I think falls into that category. Right. But so you made this decision right? and you left mm-hmm. and it seems like. That time has been pretty well spent towards building and growing right. role player. Now that because it, it it it's still upward. I mean, you you're, you're you're not really making less. You're making more. Right. Things are continuing to go well, and then I'm putting out more products that are associated with it, either kind of in the same world in terms of world building around that that title, or just doing direct expansions for the role player title. So there's kind of this this. A group of fantasy games that are all starting to build up this world, which is actually really exciting for me. Like when I first designed Role Player, I didn't think of this as a world I was building, but it's kind of starting to turn into that, which has kind of uh, been fun and exciting. And, and actually, that was, uh, I, I want to talk about uh, Lock Up for a second, but before we do, one of the interesting things, right, is um, uh, 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 why is it blanking on me? Uh, the one, the, the Russian one you just Oh, uh, Dual Powers. Dual Powers is you, since you've done 
role player and role players in the draft. You have done another Kickstarter with right. Dual Powers, mm -hmm. which by most definitions, by the like the definition the world I live in, was successful was uh, a Kickstarter. Successful. Um, but you know, at least it hasn't hit retail yet, right? Or has right, it? it has not. Um, but in in the in the in this sort of comparison to the traction of say your your Kickstarter expansion, right, for sure, role player one was much smaller. Right. I mean, and, you could. It's interesting. The original Kickstarter for a role player was only like fifty one thousand, and Dual Powers was only forty five thousand. They're not like you know night and day in terms of like uh, dollar amounts raised, but. Uh, role player caught fire when it hit retail. Yeah. Now, is Dual Powers going to catch fire when it hits retail? I would not bet on yes on that. You know, what I mean, I think I think it's a great game, but I mean, it's like the next Twilight Imperium. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I mean, no, 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 no. Strong, not, not that it'll be Twilight. Twilight, Twilight Struggle. <laughs> Twilight, Str Twilight Struggle. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight Twilight Struggle actually is slightly comparable. Twilight Imperium is not comparable <laughs> right. at all. Like, that is a what? I'm like, where are you going with this? <laughs> but um, sorry. Yeah. So I mean, that's. We'll, we'll see what happens. So I guess that's one of the other things that you're starting to touch on is like um, I start thinking about like my company's brand. You know, is is role player? You know, is is Ro Thunderworks Games a fantasy game company? Is it is it is it turning into like hey this company does fantasy stuff? Or you know, my my general philosophy has been like I want to find cool games or design cool games, and that's kind of the only criteria. It's like I want to find something awesome uh, that I think needs to you know I want to share with other people, and let's make it. Um, but at the same time, right, a lot of it starts coming into your bandwidth in your time. Right. Because I, I know you're Slate, and you have a stack more more than you can do of amazing fantasy <laughs> games, and then you have some of these other stacks, right? So, um, okay, but one of the cool things, right, so you did this other one, we set that aside, it'll hit retail at some point. When's it hitting retail? Uh, let's say December. December. Maybe January. after backers. Yeah, after backers for sure. Um, and I've played it. I've reviewed it. Lots of fun. Worth your attention. Thank you. Um, got, you know, thematically, <laughs> you know, you know, Russian history. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I, yeah, for sure. But you do now have lockup, and lockup is uh, I don't know when this video will, will drop, but presumably launching soon on Kickstarter. Probably. Yeah. Um, and it is in the. Role player universe, right, right, in a prison in the role player universe, That's right, 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 um, and it's a worker placement game, right, right. So, uh, you know, you're not the hero anymore. You're no, the, you're playing as the bad guys. The bad guys, or the, like even though like the low level bad right. guys, <laughs> uh, the bad guys that are caught. Um, and then you're also not using dice, right? It's a worker right. placement game. So right. take us through, and it wasn't designed by you, right? Right. It was designed by uh, Stan Kordowski from Milwaukee. So he's yeah. I, I met him and, and found that game at, at a protospiel. Um, which is a convention where a bunch of designers sit around and critique each other's games. And so why don't you just, in the context of the role player, like, how was it that this game, like, you played it and you're like, this game feels really good and it's a great extension of the brand and I'm going to bring these two things. Like, how did that decision come about? So definitely the extension of the brand came afterwards. So I just, I saw it as a, it's a fantasy <clears throat> um, a worker placement game and it, and it kind of hit this medium uh, to medium light, like uh, complexity, which I feel like there was a space for. You know, I feel like Stone Age is like the quintessential lightweight, medium to medium light uh, worker placement game, and this kind of had a lot of similarities in terms of the way it felt. Uh, but it had this fantasy theme, and and that was the plan is to just do this fantasy game, and it's like, well, <laughs> if I'm gonna do fantasy, if I'm gonna do fantasy. How many like generic fantasy games do I need? Why don't I just kind of try to clump, uh, attach them or make them related to each other? Um, and then that was kind of happening in the background, and then I started working on this uh, this uh, narrative game called Role Player Adventures, and um, which is, is <laughs> keeping out eye out for probably Kickstarter next uh, fall two thousand nineteen. But anyway, um, above and below, near and far, watch out! <laughs> <laughs> but um, the, the the cool thing we started kind of developing this. The world started developing, and it's and, like, and any, every world needs a prison. <laughs> Well, it's like if we've got this, we've got this other fantasy game that's in this dungeon slash prison place. Then why isn't this part of the world? And it's like um, in role player adventures, one of the adventures actually takes place in the same prison that Lockup is in. So we're kind of starting to to tie these things together, and there's there's a lot more cool stuff coming. But um, it was kind of like if you're gonna do multiple fantasy games, you might as well you know. Catch them. Yeah. <laughs> catch them. Right? Um, no, but it's, it's super cool and it's super interesting to see. Right. And I mean, the response so far to it has been awesome. So, yeah. uh, but there's the, 
player response, everyone having a, a blast playing it. There's, hey, this really feels and looks like it's in the universe. It's same artist. You can see it in all the cards. It's really, really well done. Right. But then there's how does that translate into a Kickstarter, right? Will your audience take the leap along with you into... into I mean, obviously, I hope they do. Uh, no, um, you know, but, you, you, but you'll find out, well, right? For sure. The um, futures will tell us. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, so that's, that's been cool. Yeah. Um, now, one of the things actually, and, and just looking at the time, but one of the things that has come up a few times that people have been curious about and you mentioned was Skull Callow. And not necessarily Skull Call, though that's amazing and awesome and <laughs> cool two-player game is, of all time. It, uh, yeah. But no, but how how are we working together on it? Because sometimes it's in my booth, sometimes it's in your booth. Right. So people ask me, you know, they I've, I've kind of over time kind of put my foot into three separate buckets of like I'm publishing my own stuff, I'm publishing other designer stuff, and then I'm also designing stuff for other people to publish, which is primarily that Ed's publishing some of my stuff. <laughs> um, and some of that comes from the relationship that we had working on uh, Herbaceous uh, when I came in and helped out on the single-player version of Herbaceous or uh, Herbaceous Sprouts or Sunset Over Water, future things. Um, and uh, I was feeling, uh, at the time, role player was doing well, but um, the expansion hadn't hit yet. And Ed had come to me with this idea and asked me if I wanted to help out on the design side. And I thought, well, since I'm not doing any of the publishing stuff and I'm only doing the design stuff, that's like I can work on another game and not have to do as much work. Um, <laughs> uh, I just have to do more work. <laughs> right, right. Well, um, so I said, that sounds like fun. Let's do it. So we started working on it yeah, together. Yeah. But, I mean, it's, it's turned into more work than I had originally anticipated. But... A lot of it comes from the fact that I think the game turned out really well, um, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think what's interesting is um, a lot of the times I work with other people, I I don't do a traditional model where the individual is just I saw their game at a proto spiel, I said cool, signed up, take it, and then don't see them again. Right? <laughs> a, lo a lot of it comes from relationships and people I want to work with, and I mean, I think people can see that we get along, but um, I sometimes. Um, <laughs> I feel like uh, we'd actually, a lot of these, amazingly, a lot of relationships started with me reviewing somebody's stuff. Like both right. both Steve, Finn, and you, first thing I did was actually review a game. Right. And then we started talking about Kickstarter stuff. We're getting to know each other, meeting at cons. Uh, and then it's like, well, I like this guy's work. Sure. Um, and then that's how he sort of did the single player stuff. And it, it was really breezy to work with him on single player uh, games. But then there was this big opportunity around Skull Hollow. Um, and we... He signed up. He said, sure, let's sure, do it. Let's do it. Um, and one of the uh, interesting things, I was sort of joking about it, but when, you know, Keith makes really fantastic products, and so he has a really high bar in terms of what his expectations are, <laughs> but also as a, a fellow producer, also not even necessarily the results, just in terms of the process and communication. And, right. and so uh, it's been its own fun, if you will, of right. the, the pressure, the peppering of pressure that he puts <laughs> on like... Well, hey, haven't you done that yet? Haven't you done that yet? Right. Haven't you done that yet? Um, I mean, it's interesting to like compare work styles, and we have a lot of things in common, in which not only in the board game world, but also we both worked as uh, currently or in the past as uh, producers right. or production work in video games. So, you know, I have a very specific uh, I have demands in terms of what's required in terms of communication and organization, and Ed has some of those on his own as well. So <laughs> it's been kind of like interesting to see where those things like like really work well together, right. and other times when it's like there's a little bit of a, of a conflict and we have to just talk it out. Yeah, and we also we come from different places in terms of like what we – visual design and things that uh, I like – Sure. My 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 wheelhouse and hit your wheelhouse. I think also in terms of just some gameplay differences, but I I, I think uh, it's come together well. Right? Yeah, like yeah. I think Skull Call is is uh, awesome. I think it's awesome too. And whenever <laughs> I do think it's awesome, and then when people, I was like, man, I wish I was publishing this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know, you can publish my next design or something, <laughs> but. Uh, but then, but you, but it had to be a role. I just see. I just feed him ideas. I give them yeah. to him for free. I'm like, you know what you should do with a role player? You should do this. This right. will make you a lot of money. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so no, it's an interesting relationship, and there is that pressure of like, well, um, how do we communicate that we're working together? How do how, how, you know? It seems one way is it is it, is it a pencil first games? Is it Thunderworks? On the stuff that I've done with Steve, I put the logo of Doctor Finn's games on the back. I plan to do the same for this. 
So um, it is a little confusing, but at the end of the day, if we figure it all out, and as players, people have fun and enjoy it, I think it works, right? right? That's all about. Um, and then, you know, the real, the real, you know, if you do it again, mm. so like I know Steve has signed up again and again with me and we've had right. a great time. I don't know if Keith is going to do that <laughs> or not. I, I, practically speaking, seeing where Thunderworks has exploded to mm. in the period of like when we, because Skull Call has been in development for just a little bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> um, like it, I would have recommend against it. Like at, at, at this point with where you are and right. where your business right. is, even though I am doing a lot of stuff that you don't have to worry about, it definitely feels like it's sort of like, why, why are you working on this other thing when you could be making a, a role player or, or moving into other directions? So there's that real time balance, but that right. that's in line with my recommendation. Stop editing rule books. Right. right. Like, like, right. So it, anyway. it, it comes into like, how do you want to use your time? Right? right. It's like, you know, I've got, you know, eight hours to work on something today. Am I going to work on editing a rule book that's going to get me a, you know, a couple hundred bucks or am I going to start continue to develop an idea that, Four years down the road is going to come out and be this like you make know. you a million bucks, a couple <laughs> hundred bucks versus a million bucks. Right. Just you know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think we we this is just a Q and A. I mean, hopefully, but no. I mean, from my vantage point, it seems like you've made the right decision, and and so far months, so good for sure. Down the line, it's held up. Uh, yeah, I'm feeling really good about it, and uh, I mean, one of the big things was I, I want to be doing more games. So like before, I was doing one or two games a year, and now I'm hoping to see how far I can stretch that and and maybe. Pull off, pull, pull the gas off a little bit in some areas, and kind of push it a little bit further in others. So, yeah, once a month, you know, Keith is like, "Hey, how much you get from Aldo?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I got this much," and he's like, "Ah!" <laughs> anyway, so, so, impressions. Anyway, all right. So, thanks for watching. See ya. Bye. Hey, everybody, Edo here, and thanks for watching Gaming with Edo. Reviews over here on this playlist, League and Insider videos over here on this one. Subscribe, share, all that good stuff. But most importantly, play some great games. Thanks.